The first step in preparing a cable for installation of a cable coupler is ensuring you have the required tools and materials. Due to variations in the manufacturing process of cables, it is best to confirm the cable outside diameter with a caliper or measuring tape. Ensuring you have the correctly sized entrance fitting gasket is critical for achieving a watertight seal. Some of the materials provided with your coupler are sized specifically to the cable you are working on, in particular, the entrance fitting sealing gasket and the corresponding castings. Sealing gaskets are available in 1 8 of an inch increments. Using the cable cutback guide provided with your couplers, mark your cable and remove the jacket to the prescribed length. A clean cut will help prevent tearing in the jacket. Pulling the jacket away from the conductor will help prevent damage to the conductor insulation. Pay close attention when cutting and removing the jacket to avoid damaging the conductor insulation. Any nicks or cuts may result in an electrical failure of the termination. Remove all of the bindings, wraps, and filler materials and inspect all conductors and control wires for signs of damage or moisture. If moisture is present, it is strongly recommended that you cut back the cable until all the conductors and control wires are dry to avoid an electrical failure of the termination. Once all of the fillers and wraps have been removed, confirm the length of exposed ground wire is suitable for the product you are installing. Refer to the cable cutback guide provided with your couplers for complete details and measurements. Measure and trim the ground check wire to the required length. Strip the ground check insulation back to expose the required ground check conductor length. Measure and cut all three phase conductors and shielding to the required length. Mark the cutback length for your phase conductor shielding and the position of the bonding strap. Refer to the cable cutback guide provided with your couplers for complete details and measurements. Install the bond strap over the shield before cutting the shield. Use pliers to ensure the strap is wrapped tightly around the shield. Cut off any access strap material. Carefully cut the braided shield such that approximately a quarter inch to a half inch of excess material extends past the location of the bond strap. The excess material can be folded back over the strap once installed. Once the braided shield has been removed from the phase conductors, strip back or remove the semicon cloth tape from the conductors to the prescribed length. Refer to the cable cutback guide provided with your couplers for complete details and measurements. Now that the cable insulation is exposed, Refer again to the cable cutback guide provided with your couplers for the required insulation cutback length. Mark and cut the insulation carefully.
Trim off any remaining insulation or wrapping from the conductor, leaving a clean straight edge. Install the stems by sliding the barrel over the exposed conductor. The cutback lengths provided for your coupler model are designed to ensure that the correct length of conductor is exposed. If there is more than an eighth of an inch gap between the stem and the conductor insulation, it is recommended that this gap be filled with semicon tape. The conductors may be trimmed, provided that the removal of the material will not promote excessive use of solder or prevent the set screws from securing the conductor. Repeat this procedure for each phase, ground, and ground check wire. The installation process can be made easier by tying back the wires to keep them away from the active work area. This is particularly helpful for preventing cross-contamination once you start to clean the phase conductors. You can also rotate the cable to keep your active work area isolated. Clean the conductor insulation to ensure there are no ridges or indentations from the braided shield. With some cable types, a light heating works well for removing these small depressions and restoring the cable surface to a smooth finish. Final removal of ridges or blemishes will require a light sanding. A length of emery cloth tape is provided with each termination kit for this purpose. Use the supplied solvent wipe to remove any sanding residue or grit. The sanding and wiping processes may be repeated until the insulation feels smooth and clean to the touch. Running a finger along the length of the conductor will help identify any remaining ridges or blemishes. At this stage, you have the option to do an additional wrap of semicon cloth tape around the edge of the cutback semicon to ensure a smooth and clean transition of material. If you do wish to perform this additional step, please note that semicon tape can be ordered separately. Refer to the cable cutback guide provided with your couplers for positioning of the black stress control tube. Measure the required distance from the stem and, if necessary, trim the stress control tube. Slide the black stress control tube over the conductor and insulation, positioning the tube over the shield cutback and ground strap. Using a heat source, shrink the tube securely over the area. Proceed with installation of the red insulation tube. Starting at the end closest to the stem, use a heat source to shrink the tube securely around the insulator, keeping the end of the tube butting up to the stem. Ensure that the area around the ground strap is fully covered by the tube. Trim the tube only if necessary. Repeat the procedure for each of the phases. A final tightening of the conductor set screws should be done prior to beginning the final assembly. Before proceeding with final assembly, ensure that each of the contact sealing gaskets is in place. Sealing gaskets are required for each of the three phases, as well as the ground and the ground check contacts. Slide the rear body gasket over the conductors and position it securely to prevent it from falling off prior to installation of the front body. Position the front body and pull the three phase conductors through the main opening of the front body. You do not need to pull the pilot and ground conductors through the opening. Confirm that the insulator gasket is installed and where appropriate, confirm that any spacer washers are correctly sealed in their required positions. Insert each lead into the corresponding phase tube of the insulator. Each insulator tube is marked with a color code corresponding to that of each cable lead. 
Ensure each phase lead is correctly seated in the insulator. Fasten the contact nut over each phase stem with the contact nut installation tool. Fasten the insulator assembly to the front body with the retaining screws. Position the ground lead securely in the required location, ensuring the gasket is in place and the ground stem is properly seated. Install front contacts to secure the stems in position. A firm hand tightening with a hex head wrench will secure the contacts. Insert the pilot stem into the pilot insulator, ensuring the stem is fully seated inside the tube. Install front contact to secure the pilot stem in position. A firm hand tightening with a hex head wrench will secure the contact. The bond leads can now be attached to the coupler body at the prescribed location. Check the drawing or installation manual provided with your coupler for the bonding points specific to your coupler. Use the bolts applied to secure all three eyelets to the recommended bonding point. Confirm that the main body gasket is correctly positioned, then attach the front and rear bodies using the hardware supplied. Once the body is assembled, a final tightening of the contacts and the insulator retaining bolts is recommended. As an optional step, potting compound can be installed in the rear body of the coupler. The fastest and easiest method for pouring compound into a cable coupler is through the rear body prior to installing the entrance fittings. Position the coupler vertically and pull the entrance fitting components and cable aside. Pour compound, ensuring the phase tubes are filled completely. It is recommended that some airspace be left in the back of the rear body. Follow the instructions provided with the compound for additional handling and setup instructions. It is recommended that the entrance fitting be installed immediately after pouring the compound to prevent cable movement while the compound sets up. Slide the entrance fitting castings and gasket into position and install the bolts. Insert strain relief gaskets into clamps and secure over the cable and entrance fitting with the hardware provided. Your installation is now complete.